This video is for anyone who needs to back up or restore a Symbio 700 controller. Backing up a controller is useful in terms of allowing you to recover quickly in case of a controller failure. Uh, you can circumvent all the configuration and settings pages by restoring a good backup to the controller. It's also useful in the case of a firmware upgrade. Uh, generally those go off without a hitch, but it's always nice to have that backup uh, ready to go in case there's any issues. So to set the stage for what you're seeing here, I have connected to a, a Symbio 700 controller using the Symbio service and installation app. If you need help getting the app or connecting to a controller, see our getting connected video. I also have a USB thumb drive inserted into the USB port in the upper left hand area of the controller. The app will not back up a controller to your mobile device. It will back it up to the thumb drive. Uh, the, the backup files are just a little large for the communication capacity of the Bluetooth uh, communication with the mobile device. So backing up to a thumb drive makes it a much more manageable process. To find the backup option, I'm going to tap the tools icon in the bottom right corner of the screen. The backup option is about two thirds of the way down the tools list. And now I see a backup screen. It's got a couple of notes reminding me about the USB storage device and stating that this process usually takes three minutes. When I do it for you now, I'm gonna pause the video so that you don't have to watch the whole process, but it does take a few minutes to do a backup file. I'm ready to go, so I'm going to tap backup now. While the backup is in progress, I'll see the gray overlay over the screen and the green spinner on the screen. In a few minutes, when it's finished, it'll switch to saying loading with the spinner. And I'll know it's done when the overlay completely disappears. Here we see the loading. And now the overlay has disappeared. The screen looks like it did before we kicked off the backup. And I know that my backup is complete. And now I'll show you how to do a restore on a controller. The restore options right below backup. So here you can see I have an option to restore a controller backup. The second where it's grayed out saying restore factory defaults. If this were a factory installed controller that had shipped on a piece of equipment, one of the last things done before it left the factory would be to store a backup. So with restore factory defaults, I would be able to get back to that factory state of the controller. This controller is more representative of what you'd see in a service part controller. It does not have a factory default in it, so that is not an option for me to do. But I can do a, a controller backup, which uh, will, let me, will let me restore the backup I made just a few minutes ago. So the restore page, has a couple of notes on it. First, letting you know what the restore does. It'll overwrite all the existing data with the saved data from the backup. The note about the USB storage device, just like we don't store a backup to the phone, the app will not push a backup file. So the backup would come from the USB storage device that had been inserted into the controller. There's also a note that it will reboot the controller and you're going to have to reconnect. So you'll lose your connectivity to the device and you will need to reconnect to it. Then it gives me the option to select a backup file. If I tap that text for select a backup file, it's going to show me a list of all the backups saved on the controller. And I can select a backup file Next, this will show me all the information that I need to see about the backup. So a note that it shows the version 
um, you generally would not restore, say, a version four back up to a version three controller. You would want that controller to be up to date uh, with the same level or higher than the backup file. I can also see the product name. So I would, if I put an Odyssey file backup over a precedent controller, it would change that to working for an Odyssey controller. I can also see my part numbers as well. I know this is the backup I want. So if I scroll down, I can see the proceed button. And if I tap that, it's going to move me forward. I can see, do one last double check of my backup. And then I can tap the restore backup button to continue the restore. Now we'll wait while the system restore proceeds. The first thing you'll see in the app is the information letting you know that you're going to lose connection to the device. And then you'll see a Bluetooth disconnected screen. Now what it notes here and what's important to note is that the blue light flashing means that the controller is ready to connect to but it's going to be flashing still while it's going through the restore. At this point, you want to disconnect from the device and go back to the list of units. And you're going to wait until the display on the unit says that it is waiting to connect. It's been a little bit of time to do the restore and I am going to bring up my camera on my phone and show you that now the display says Bluetooth is waiting and the Bluetooth blue light is flashing, which means it's ready to connect. Going back to the app, I'm going to tap the controller. Press the check mark button. When I reconnect to the controller, it's going to let me know that my restore completed successfully and I can hit the OK button and the data should load back up on this page. And you, at this point, uh, we'd be ready to do whatever else we need to do with this controller. It has been restored. So if this were a controller replacement, uh, at this point, the replacement controller, once I'd pushed that backup file to it, uh, done the restore for the backup file, you'd be able to use this controller as though it was the original. So this is the end of the restore video.